In part one of this video series, we discussed CO2 only plant corrosion in the absorber and in rich amine piping. Now we're gonna get to the good stuff, corrosion of the reboiler and the regenerator. Welcome to the Experts Network. Welcome back to the Experts Network. My name is Ben Spooner and I'm a senior process engineer with Amy and Experts. You are now watching part two of our video series on CO2 only amine plant corrosion. Part one, we talked about the absorber. We talked a little bit about rich amine piping and now we're gonna get into the good stuff, the regenerator and the reboiler. It's the most common area where we see corrosion in CO2 only plants. Now, Remember back to part one of this video series, we showed a nomograph that illustrated the relationship between CO2 and temperature. And quite simply, we don't want CO2 to be in areas of high temperature in our aiming plant. Now, of course, the regenerator and reboiler are high temperature. So the idea is when the amine enters the regenerator, we want the CO2 gone as soon as possible. And we definitely don't want CO2 entering the reboiler. Now, the reboiler will remove the CO2. You know, you sample your lean amine, do your lean loading test, it's nice and low, but the problem is reboilers are not designed for CO2 removal and you will corrode them if you try to use them for CO2 removal. So it's very important when amine enters the regenerator that the CO2 be removed very quickly. In order for CO2 to be removed out of amine, um, ironically, you have to heat it up. So the heat will drive the CO2 out if there's enough of it, all right? This case study we're gonna go get into right away here was where they had bad, bad reboiler corrosion. And when we first started troubleshooting the problem, we used a simulator to predict the temperature profile of the regenerator and here's what it looked like. The amine entered on the second tray or third tray in this case from the top because the top couple trays are reflux trays. All right, so the amine enters and you can see it flow down the trays but the temperature never changed. Meaning it wasn't contacting any steam, there was nothing to heat it up. So it just kind of is like, well, whatever, this is boring, flows down the trays, and it wasn't until the bottom three or four trays that it actually contacts some steam and start to heat itself up. It then goes into the reboiler, which finished the job of heating. You know, we were boiling the amine in the reboiler, but we weren't boiling it very hard. And the problem there is, if we look at the corresponding CO2 profile in that regenerator, when we're not heating the amine up, we're also not removing CO2, okay? We want 95% of the CO2 that was in that rich amine when it entered the regenerator gone before it enters the reboiler. And you can't do that if you're only regenerating on the bottom two or three trays of the regenerator tower. This plant, in fact, might as well have just bypassed the regenerator altogether and sent their amine right into the reboiler. The reboiler was doing the vast majority of the CO2 stripping. And it's very corrosive, so don't do that. Now, how could the operators have known this was happening? They, most regenerators do not have temperature indicators throughout. So they don't know what the temperature profile is and they therefore don't know what's happening to the CO2 in there. Well, if you're lucky, your DCS screen will have temperature of the liquid feeding the reboiler as well as coming out of the reboiler or the reboiler temperature itself, either one. What you do not want is there to be a difference in temperature, more than a couple of degrees difference in temperature. You, you basically you don't want cold amine into a reboiler and then hot amine coming out. Because that tells you that the reboiler is having to heat up the amine. In the regenerator, the amine never got heated up the way it was supposed to. So you don't want that. Instead, what you want is this, where the temperatures are about the same in and out of the reboiler. Okay, it means the amine, as it flows down those trays or packing of the regenerator, became very, very close to its boiling point, and then we pushed it over the edge in the reboiler itself. Now, that's not, that alone, just having the temperatures in and out of the reboiler is not enough to 
completely tell you if you're making enough steam in the reboiler to properly regenerate the amine. You also need to pay attention to the very important overhead temperature here. In most CO2 only plants, we do want that, you know, 95 to 100 degrees Celsius, 205 to 210F, you know, it kind of depends on the overhead pressure. We did a video earlier on in, in this, in our YouTube channel called how to adjust steam flow to the reboiler. I highly recommend you guys watch it. Even if you're not using steam as a heat source to your reboiler, even if you're using hot oil or glycol or direct fired, still watch that video because we talk a lot more about how to interpret the temperatures in a regenerator. But bottom line is you want the temperatures in and out of the reboiler be the same and you want a nice high overhead temperature leaving the regenerator. Uh, so what happens when you do that, we take these, these the same two graphs I just showed, the collapsed temperature profile we call that, meaning there's no temperature in the regenerator tower. When we adjust the operation, either increase the heat duty to the reboiler or conversely, slow down the amine circulation rate and don't touch the reboiler, you're gonna get this. This is a correct temperature profile for a regenerator, where the amine entered on that same second tray as before, but the first thing that happened was it, boom, it got hit with a wall of steam, like walking into a sauna in Finland, and whoa, right away, it gets heated up. Only took a couple of trays, and the bottom half of the regenerator, really, there's not much temperature difference. It means already super hot. What does that do to our CO2 profile? It does very good things to it. If you look down here, the corresponding CO2 removal profile, the amine came in, the CO2 very quickly dropped because we're flashing it up into the vapor space and we're getting rid of it. And ultimately what happens is by the time that amine feeds the reboiler, there's no CO2 left. It's just lean amine. When we don't have CO2 entering the reboiler, we don't have anything wanting to corrode the reboiler either. So proper regeneration is fundamental in a CO2 only plant regeneration. Um, otherwise, you can wind up like these guys. Now those graphs I just showed, this was the exact reason why this client of ours had hired us is because they were having a lot of uh, reboiler corrosion and they wanted to know why, okay? and. That was why. Well, when we opened up the reboiler right around where, this was a, a vertical thermal siphon reboiler and where the gaskets were, the gaskets were leaking. So there's actually a physical amine leakage, but around the gaskets was a lot of pitting because it's a stagnant area. The, some gas got in between the gasket and the metal, nothing to, uh, no reason for the gas to leave that area. So it just sits there and hangs out and the CO2 just chewed away at the metal, chewed away at the metal. Not what you want for your reboiler, okay? Here's another example. This is a different plant, another vertical thermal siphon. In this case, again, we were breaking CO2 out of the amine and we were also running it at a high turndown meaning we were flowing a lot less amine through that reboiler than what it was designed for. It was a big, huge reboiler with hardly any amine going through there. And again, it means we wind up with these stagnant zones. We don't have the, the, the high velocity, you know, chaos that thermal siphons are normally associated with. So we weren't operating it at its design conditions, which is never really good, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, what made this bad was they were allowing CO2 into that reboiler. Uh, reboil is not the only thing that can suffer. The bottom of a regenerator, from the bottom tray to the liquid level below, that's just a big, stagnant, dry zone. We don't have amine on the wall of the regenerator. Amine, of course, is a corrosion inhibitor. So if the metal's coated with amine, we don't have corrosion. But if it's just bare metal, then it's very, very vulnerable to any molecules of CO2 that may be floating around in that area. They could have come back in from the reboiler. So again, don't let CO2 down in the bottom section or you wind up like this, this is pitting, really, really bad pitting to the point where the whole regenerator had to be replaced. Ouch. Um, tube sheet corrosion of reboilers. So the, the boiling of the kettle type reboiler this picture's from, okay? A lot of boiling and vaporization, again, of CO2 in that high temperature environment, we corrode the reboiler. So corrosion of the reboiler shell, corrosion of reboiler tube sheet, corrosion of regenerator bottoms. None of these are what you wanna have happen to your plant. They're all very avoidable just from understanding proper regeneration of the amine. 
Finally, one more thing we see, another bad consequence of not having enough vapor traffic in your regenerator. You know, and again, CO2 guys, they don't always clue in. They think, well, I don't need that low of a lean loading. It's not like an H2S plant where lean loading is critical to meeting H2S spec. I can get away with a higher lean loading. That may be true as far as your absorber is concerned, but it's not good news for the regenerator. Hydraulic effects can also cause corrosion. So here's a case where we had low downcomer flooding, okay? So they just weren't circulating enough aiming, big downcomer, low aiming, so a lot of the downcomer was again just bare, bare metal. Or in another example where we had low vapor flooding or low jet flooding, not enough steam to splash the amine up around the wall of the vessel. And so again, bare metal, very prone to CO2 attack. So be very careful if you're trying to operate your plant different than what it was designed for, okay? Because you may be setting yourself up for failure from a hydraulic point of view. Okay, I hope that gives you guys some I don't know, clues or ideas as to what to look into if you have experienced corrosion in your amine regenerator or reboiler and CO2 only plants. I thank you very much for watching guys. Please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. The more subscribers we have, the more motivated we are to keep making these videos. Ding the bell so you know when we put out a new video and we hopefully see you guys in about two weeks from today. Thank you very much.